Hello everyone. This is going to be a 200 jury charge uh, test for the RPR simulator and this will be five minutes long. Ready? Here we go. An analyst from the lab, one particular analyst, found DNA on one piece of evidence on a hair that was collected from the previous case that didn't match. That didn't match the defendant, and so the defendant was released. He was released from prison. Ironically, you will hear that the analyst from the lab, the DNA specialist, who exonerated the defendant was a woman named Stacy Reynolds. You're going to hear her name later on in the case because Ms. Reynolds, as evidence is developed in this case, happens to be the very same analyst that does the DNA workup. She does all of the testing of the DNA case. All right, I'm going to, because the side screens are not quite as large, the bottom is cut off or the top is cut off, you are going to have to look behind me at least until we take our break when we can fix the side screens. So this is the very first time and the very first important photo that I want you all to look at. This is the actual property. It is the actual junkyard. It consists of about 40 acres of junked cars. It consists of four different residences. There are four trailers on this actual piece of property. The Bobby Carter trailer, which is located in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, or which would be the northwest corner of the property. Right next to Mr. Carter's trailer is his sister's property. Her name at that time was Marsha Jones. Also living with Marsha at the time were her sons, all four sons, all with the name of Taft. They included the defendant, John Taft, his brothers, Paul and Sean and Raymond. They all lived on the same property as well. Another trailer that's located on this property was the Michael and Diane Carter trailer. These were the grandparents of John, or the mom and dad, if you will, of Bobby and his sister, Marcia. And also on the property was the his brother, Caden's trailer. So there's four residences. You can see all of the buildings that are on this massive property in which some of them are businesses. You will also notice on these aerial photographs that there are a lot of buildings. There's an outbuilding, there are business buildings, there are a lot of sheds and those kinds of things that you need to be familiar with as you hear about some of the searches and where some of the evidence is found, all right? Well, the investigation takes a dramatic turn on the morning of Saturday, November 5, when two citizen searchers named Megan and Sam Stye, who was given permission to search the Carter Salvage property, these 40 acres, happened to find the car that you can see here. They happened to find Beth Bright's car or SUV. Now you will notice that Beth Bright's SUV is covered. It is concealed. There will be testimony that it was intentionally concealed with branches of a tree and debris and this very large hood for a vehicle. You will notice a large either car or truck hood that is leaned up against her car. Suffice it to say though that at 1030 in the morning on the 5th of November, this case takes a very dramatic turn. You will hear that the VIN number, that is the vehicle identification number when they are looking for Beth, when the citizens are searching for Beth actually matches. And so they know at that time that the vehicle is in fact the vehicle in question. More importantly, you will hear evidence about where the vehicle was found. Ms. Bright's vehicle was found in the opposite corner of both the Carter and the Taft's trailer. Notice that it's behind kind of a pond, but it's immediately adjacent to or close to a car crusher. That car crusher is actual equipment. You will hear in this case and the evidence will show that this is the kind of equipment that is designed to crush cars. It kind of makes sense. It is actually called a car crusher. It actually makes vehicles very, very small, almost unidentifiable, and it's easily removed from the property. And you will see why and you will hear why Beth Bright's vehicle is placed in that location. That is that proximity to the car crusher. You will also hear later on that night after the search warrants were obtained, and you will hear what search warrants are. Search warrants are judicial authorization. That is, a judge tells law enforcement that you can go ahead and search a property for evidence of a crime. So after those search warrants were obtained, you are going to hear that first evening that some canine units, what are called cadaver dogs, at least insensitively called cadaver dogs, which one dogs that are trained to find and detect human remains, and they in fact hit on the vehicle of Beth Bright and alerted or indicated that there was either a deceased individual in the back of that car or that there was human blood in the back of the car. You are going to hear evidence that this vehicle was loaded onto an enclosed trailer. It wasn't processed there at the scene. It was actually driven to Mapleton, to the Mapleton Crime Lab for processing at that time. 
all right? Now let me just tell you again, this is a lot of information. This is days and days and days worth of testimony that again, we are going to try to kind of fit into a short period of time because it's important to get to the crux of this, this case, which is what we'll be able to show a little bit later. Now on Saturday, the residences and the places are starting to be searched, all right? <clears throat> okay, we have a lengthy word list. We've got Stacy Reynolds, capital S-T-A-C-I-E, Reynolds, capital R-E-N-O-L-D-S, Bobby Carter, capital B-O-B-B-Y, Carter, capital C-A-R-T-E-R, Marsha Jones, capital M-A-R-S-H-A, -A, Jones, capital J-O-N-E-S, uh, Taft, capital T-A-F-T, -T, Sean, capital S-E-A-N, John, capital J-O-H-N, Raymond, capital R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, Paul, capital P-A-U-L, Michael and Diane Carter, Michael, capital M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Diane, capital D-I-A-N-E, Carter, capital C-A-R-T-E-R, Caden, -E capital C-A-Y-D-E-N, Megan, capital M-E-G-A-N, Sam, capital S-A-M, Sty, capital S-T-A-I, Beth Bright, capital B-E-T-H, Bright, capital B-R-I-G-H-T, Mapleton Crime Lab, capital M-A-P-P-L-E-T-O-N, Crime, capital C-R-I-M-E, and Lab, capital L-A-B. And that concludes the 200 jury charge for the RPR simulator. Good luck.